Today on Modern Combatives, we travel all the way to Swanee, Georgia to meet up with the Sida Goo, Dr. Odette Russell, creator of the Sister Warriors Against Madness Martial Arts System. This system is derived from her husband's system, Swan Martial Arts Academy. We've come a long way to get a great education. Another must-see episode, so let's get to it. Marshall Mays, thank you for having us. Peace oh, be yes. Yes. yes, yes, thank you. Yes. Uh, are you ready? Man, am I? Are we ready for a Sidaku experience? We are ready for, for a Sidaku sure. experience. Let's do this. Let's Let's do do it. It. All, All right. right. All right. <laughs> I began my martial arts journey when I was nine years old in 1971. I trained in a Taekwondo system in the South Bronx for one year. Of course, he was very strict and too strict for me to see the value of it, so I quit when I was 10. I started again with true hardcore training when I met my husband, CJ Abdul Mutaka Bear, at 18. And I haven't stopped training since. Well, SWAM is a hybrid system of various forms of martial arts, and it came about through the, uh, uh, one of the instructors' names that had an epiphany one day and he said, the name of our system we're gonna call Swamp. So I didn't particularly like that name, so I hung up the phone over him, hung the phone on him and said, nah, that ain't gonna work. Then he explained to me what Swamp meant. Swamp meant Sheldon Wilkins, and my name, Abdul Mukabia. So that's how Swamp came out. We basically uh, stood uh, for something completely different during that time of the 80s when tradition was very strong. And so what we decided to do was take that what we felt it was non-classical, non-classical, pardon me, and make it applicable so it could become practical in reality. So we took the tradition and we kind of like you know, sharpened and chopped it away and basically, you know, put our own blueprint in it and developed our own system through the two styles of the Tetsutora, which is the Iron Tiger, and my system, which is Fujika Boxing. We made them connect you know, together and we called it the, uh, the Swam. So Swam went on as a hybrid system and the name also means spiritual warriors against madness, soldiers with a mission, strong, wise, achieving men, smart women and men, siege or warrior Abdul Mataka Bear, sisters with alert minds, and a lot of different other attributes that go on and on. We developed the other, other aspects of SWAM, which is uh, sisters warriors against madness, where my wife, she's capable of training women. I teach her, I don't teach her closed fists, I teach her what I call poison hand, open hand training. Because of, uh, you know, they got, we got to understand the, the logic and the reality of, of training. To me, there's three different aspects of training. There's, the, 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 there's uh, what I call sport, and there's hobby, and there's reality. I don't, I train reality. You know, I don't even call our art no anymore self-defense. We stopped that last week. We call it just survival. You know, self-survival. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm not waiting basically for you to throw a punch. You know, I throw a punch back at you like it's a contest. I gotta be prepared, you know, to survive as soon as you open your mouth or I feel your vibe. Upon entering the Swam Martial Arts Academy, we see instantly the House of Discipline Maxim posted on the wall. And we get that message loud and clear. With that, there are pictures of well over 40 plus years of martial knowledge posted on the walls. It helps to remember that Sidagu Dr. Odette Russell is the wife of Sijo Abdul Malta Kabir, founder of the Swam Academy of Martial Sciences. So welcome to my dojo. Please come on Thanks. in. This is the front part of it. As you can see, there are certain apparatuses 
we have, that is the banana bag. Mm -hmm. And different type of, this is the wall of history. <laughs> you see some amazing pictures here, some history. These are, this is a bob that has like a dummy apparatus. These are different, this is Wing Chun dummy. This is a, they call it a, a, a jung, mm -hmm. all right? And. I just had a quick question. Yes. So you have, so these are all Wing Chun dummies. Um, well, this is actually the Wing Chun. Oh, dummy. The, so that's so. Yeah. The, so these so are all different. different yeah. So they're different. Believe it or not, purposes. there's an eagle claw dummy. Okay. So the different Chinese systems had their own dummies way before the Wing Chun system mm -hmm. was developed. Oh, so, information. Well, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. Well, didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. what? What would be the differences, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah. Well, you see here, the arms are wider. Okay. And this arm is narrower. Oh. So, when I'm working here. I'm working a narrower where here my my steps would be more you know wider because okay. I'm dealing with the arms a lot wider. Yes. Okay. So that's the difference. Oh wow. Well, well, so you learn you yeah. learn something new yeah. every day? All the time. Mm -hmm. Ready? Yes, okay. let's go. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> so this is the primary area where we do our training. Uh -huh. This is where my students ask permission to come in, so this is the technically the dojo here. Understand environmental awareness as a female. I know that I have to watch my P's and Q's, and I have to be aware of what's going on around me. Most important, I have to enhance my spider senses so my intuition can pick up things that I cannot see. As I trained for those 40 plus years through Swan Martial Arts Academy, I also learned the vulnerable areas of the human anatomy. So I'm going to ex show you on Bob right here. And this drill that was created by Siju Abdul Mataka Bear, and this is one of the first things that I teach my females, and it's a level of empowerment, is what areas of the body, if I strike them with a minimal amount of energy, will I create the most damage? So my goal is hit them where it hurts. Now some of it is fatal and some of it is not. For instance, this blow here, I pop the eardrums, it's a cup, and I could do both. Alright, the other area is the throat. If I use a leopard strike, that's easier to get in. And if he has a double chin, I'll just pull the chin. As I'm pulling chin, I could dig up in the eyes or dig up in the nose. So you can see the effect of how you could actually use his face against him. So we're going to just do a partial part of the drill. This drill has 169 strikes. It's from the front, the side, and the back. We're not going to do the whole. We're just probably going to do the first 20. All right. Um, before we go on, as a female instructor, I'm able to show you parts that if a male instructor showed you, for a form of attack, it might be a little creepy, even though he has good intentions, but coming from me, I'll make it fun and interesting and not creepy. So one of them is a groin attack. Um, I do know that when we do knee strikes to the groin, as you can see, I hold the head and do knee strikes. There are certain individuals that that will not, affect, will not have an effect. So what we do, along with doing this, if in a situation where they have no clothes on, and this is a process of a rape, we're able to actually go under, grab everything, testicles and everything, turn and rip. So I go up the thigh. So if I just get the penis, that's fine, but I'm trying to get it all, I'm trying to get the crown jewels. You got to understand the testicle is just hanging by a piece of skin. So that's that goal. So I grab, I have this hand up here, and you can see. I turn, and that's enough pain as it is, and I pull. Even though I might not pull it off, I could still do more damage by shooting it here. Okay? The other attempt area, or the area that I will attempt, is called the nipple twist. I will turn and twist the nipple. So far, everybody I know, male and female, have nipples, and how you could imagine that could be useful. Hey, we're in the street. Anything goes. 
The goal is to survive. The goal is to give him enough pain that his mindset changes from, I'm going to get you to, oh crap, I need to get away from you. This is the wrong person I should have attacked. So if I say he grabs me like this, right, I can bite the nipple or I can twist the nipple. So it just shows you how you could apply it to any type of situations. So we're going to do just part of it. We're not going to go super fast. But it, the goal of this drill is to develop muscle memory. When we're in a situation where we are attacked, the goal is not to have to think, just react. All right, you ready? Go. And we do the other side. So we make sure we work both sides and our hands. That's it. As an observation, I noticed that the Bob dummy was taller. I asked Sida Go about this. She explained that most male assailants are taller, so it makes sense to train with a dummy that is taller. saying when we were dealing with Bob mm -hmm. that our assailant likes to throw us off balance, us as females. Mm -hmm. and, and so I apply and address a lot of what happens in street situations to my training to the women that I train. So we always, we, we also do katas, we do weapons and um, we do drills and we do all the other stuff of other systems, but I play a heavy focus on the self-defense that occurs to females directly to females. So what this is a scenario that I want to show you on how to get out of a defense situation okay. when someone is choking you and throwing you off balance by throwing you into the wall. Okay. Okay. So what I want you to see is most likely my attacker is going to be 70 pounds heavier. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, upper body strength twice as strong as mine. So I'm not going to compete with him here and here. That's not going to make any sense. I'm going to lose every time. If I get into a fist fight with a man, I will lose. Okay, I have to focus on those sensitive areas, those soft tissues, mm -hmm. okay, that will cause instant reaction so that I can do a little more and then I can eventually flee, run for my life. That's the goal. Yes. Okay, so you're going to choke me into the wall. Two hand? Mm hmm, two hand choke. Okay, so I want to go do this again. Mm -hmm. What you notice when you choked me, I already know there's a situation. I can sense it in my box. And once I see your hands are raising, something's about to happen. Mm -hmm. So once your hands are raising, I can do something like that. But if I don't get there in time and you, and you get to my throat, I have to make sure that this is, could take seconds for me to pass out. So throw me off balance, there's nothing worse than getting choked into the wall. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind, your upper body strength is more stronger than my upper body strength. So if you're choking me to the wall and I'm trying to fight against it, all I'm doing is hurting myself. Mm -hmm. So go back. I'm going to flow with it. So you're going to choke me in the wall. Throw me into the wall. Sorry about that. I just reacted. That's great. I'll go slower. <laughs> no, so when you choke me into the wall, Right? The first thing I do is I see your hands come up and I use, go back again, mm -hmm. choke me into the wall slow, and I use just to break the fall. Mm -hmm. So I'm not hitting my spine. Mm -hmm. Okay? All your power, all your force is to, to me in this wall. Mm -hmm. I have to instantly react. Okay? So my reaction would be to cut down this tree. All right? So when you're choking me into the wall. If I do this, this gets tighter. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I do this, now I got you. Okay? Now, if you have hair, that's not a good thing. If you have a beard, that's not a good thing. If you have a groin, that's not a good thing. I'm sorry, I'm having fun. So let's finish the technique. What I want to do is I want to see how we can use the wall as my friend and as your enemy, mm -hmm. okay, within this technique. I might as well, I'm right here. Right, right, okay? right. So you're going to choke me into the wall. It's 
see how my shoulders go up to avoid the pressure against okay kick to the shin I'm already I'm already I don't have a problem with balance I don't have a problem with balance because you're having me lean against something that's supporting me I can pick up my leg at this point kick to the shin if I kick to the knee bring it down to your patella tendon I move this hand off both hands off okay what I want to do is go straight to the areas and I go right to the throat from the throat you see in I dig in the lyrics so he taps when he feels it from here I go into the eyes and then I rip see the back of the hand now I have him under control okay so I'm I'm not gonna run at this point I got so many toys to play with I'm like oh what do I do first do I grab the one do I rip do I pull his bed down do I bring him up you know what I'm saying now nah, I think I'll just elbow him so I elbow and then I'm gonna come around bring him around into a chokehold and then from here I'm gonna just bang his head into the wall as many times as I want and then at this point I use the shoulder and his chin or his beard to bring him up and throw him down and then smother smother now watch how I smother him the palm there's only two passageway the air can come out palm down and put all my body in there and then if I want the neck eyes okay now he's contained he's no longer a threat to me but he might be a threat to somebody else guess what I got your license I know where you live okay Dwayne he's no longer gonna be a problem to me but he might be a problem in the future for other people not as long as I have this I'll come after you if I ever hear that you hurt anyone again is that understood yes okay okay another form of losing your balance is getting your hair pulled you have to understand if you want to control the body you control the neck by controlling the neck you control the head if you want to control the head you control the hair so if I pull your hair okay I can take him down and the same apply if a man is going to attack a female and he grabs her hair he will most likely pull it down and you can pull it with some force and my reaction is to go with it okay my reaction is not to when you pull my hair is to be like this because it's gonna hurt me and not hurt him and he's just gonna pull harder mm -hmm. um, one of the things I wanted to mention, because I do a lot of research with um, the understanding what are the common attacks, and they said for strangers to punch women is not very common. Strangers will slap women, grab women, pull women, grab their hair, you know, choke women, um, but won't punch women. Punching on women is more domestic. Mm -hmm. related where someone that you know like a boyfriend or a husband they are more punching and that's more in I want to hurt you because I know you type of thing and punish you and dis disfigure your face and stuff like that but attackers don't really go after punching women in the face and stuff like that so I apply that analogy so when he's pulling my hair when it comes to self-protection it continues to be important that one understands the techniques that are being demonstrated right now have to be done with the right mindset and a serious degree of self-control so as not to seriously hurt one's training partner. However, the execution of each technique must still contain the proper application to be effective in real life combat. Bottom line, a mother, a sister, a daughter, a girlfriend, or wife, the lives may depend on it. Make them nice and clean for the police. <laughs> so, a quick question though. Um, now, you were showing us the, the pulls from the side and, and stuff like that, and you have addressed um, a random attacker. But what, I guess uh, the question I ask is what do most women face? Would it be more a domestic uh, assault? Or would it be the random, the rando, they're walking down the street minding their business? Because I'm going to get questioned about that. And people are going to be concerned and ask that question. So what, what, what do you think? Well, depending on where you live. If you live somewhere like in New York, your more threats are 
random attacks. And um, if you have a docile, maybe a submissive, victimized personality, you automatically attract predators. And then you'll always, regardless um, who you're dating, you'll always find yourself in a victimized situation. And it's not like it's never a person's fault to being abused. All right, but if you were abused as a child, most likely you'll find yourself being abused as an adult. And as you kind of fit that persona of a sheep, mm. okay, mm. a sheep, someone that pays the bills, goes to work, but doesn't believe in violence and just kind of um, allows someone to dictate their life. And, but my job is to turn you into a sheep dog. Okay, <laughs> and that is a person that pays the bills and goes through life, but address violence with violence. So you have a sense of confidence in you, a sense of empowerment in you that predators can see from miles away. Mm -hmm. They say a predator can smell a wounded animal a mile away. That's correct. They can also sense a strong animal and they avoid those animals. That's like bullies or narcissists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now an attacker is an attacker. I don't care if it's your father, I don't care if it's your brother, I don't care if it's a stranger, an attacker is an attacker. One of the big analogies that I focus on is we ain't no Lois Lane. <laughs> and what we say by that is we don't need superheroes because we are our own superheroes. And what I like to do is just give them the inspiration and the encouragement to become their own healers, their own heroes, and their own leaders. So I also do heavy knife work and the most important thing that I do is teach my students the responsibility of the blade all right they have to know that this is not a toy the drills that we teach and we teach multiple knife drills are not games we um swam is a hybrid system is a combination of multiple traditional martial arts that CJ has trained under for multiple years and um and so we've actually developed our own analogy and 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 um <clears throat> and categories that's not necessarily tradition. For instance, with the knife holding up to the sky like a hammer, we call that heaven. When we flip the knife down like an ice pick, we call that earth. So when I tell her, okay, hold the knife in heaven position, okay, she has the knife flipped up. On occasion if I'm doing deep cuts, I might have my thumb here. So I can get that real sharp, deep cut. That's really important when I'm doing, I'm trying to get to the organs. That could possibly be over two inches into the body. Okay? Um, when I, we call this the autopsy, when we're going up and down the line. Um, I also call, when I'm just using the tip, we call that like a paintbrush. Where it's like we're painting. Okay? So, it's just... <clears throat> it's just something that our students can relate with. It's not necessarily traditional, but it's effective, and that's what counts. There are bleed out areas, certain areas where it's called primary arteries, and it's the carotid, and it's the brachial, and it's also from here, femoral. Okay? And Within this drill, you not only learn where the spleen is, where the liver is. Um, we also know that the liver is the second largest organ. And <clears throat> you stabbing the liver is different than a liver strike. When a liver strike will be more, the body will be more responsive as opposed to a stab. They might still come at you with, with a stab. It's not that same jolt. Um, you will, they will eventually bleed out, but, it, but they might still attack you in the interim. So I make sure that my girls understand that. And the interesting part too, when we're handling blades, right, if she's coming at me with a push, all right, what <clears throat> every move I make, there's a strike. And I try to keep the strike within the square. So if you see here, if I'm combing here, the strike is within the square. So right into the eye. Soft tissues.
So what I'm saying is, when, if I'm cutting a gut for the intestines, I'm not going to go all the way out here and then come back and go all the way out here and then come back and go all the way up here. I won't make all those unnecessary movements. That's going to take away time and energy. All right, so if I'm coming here, I'm just going close to the body. My weapons train my hands. My hands train my weapons. This is a tool. I teach my students not to say it's a weapon for legal reasons, okay? And when they are using a cell phone for self-defense, we apply the same analogy to the human body with how we used the knife. First of all, I'm going to show you how to hold the cell phone. It seems ridiculous, but I'm going to show you to you anyway. This is the web of the hand. Place the cell phone here and hold it tight in the center. This is horizontal. Horizontal will hit areas that okay that are flat vertical will hit areas that are narrower all right and then you also have the points don't forget the points this is the vertical so you can see opposite from horizontal and up the leg hit here you can also hit up the armpit. So you have both ends like you do even with a blade, but we do the same drill using the cell phone. So we hit I. You notice? Because we have now the edges. And the edges right here still hits like a hammer. Right? Come so I and go up. This is a death blow. This is the lyrics from here. Karatic. We're just bruising at this point. And then you go up and down. Interesting part about these, probably you're just breaking the ribs here, but here, if you get the strike right, these are organ strikes. So as you know, especially with the liver and the kidneys. The liver, there's a part of the liver that's hanging down. The, um, the ribs and the liver is the second largest organ. Do you know what the largest organ is? Um, Come on. Your skin. Very good. You get a gold star. The, the largest is your skin. So <clears throat> it's shaped up like a football. And what happens when you bang it, it's like a shock to the system. It actually feeds that shock, that, that, that injury, through the vagus nerve back to the brain. It is excruciating pain. They say that you can knock out the Incredible Hulk with those type of strikes, liver strikes, um, kidney strikes. And so any, anything that can knock out the Incredible Hulk, I'm interested in. <laughs> okay, so as you can see the drill, now I want to apply it to a technique, okay? Sidagu, it was great. We learned a lot. We learned a lot about you. We met your husband, and mm -hmm. it was nice meeting him, but this episode was really about you. That's so right. So glad we got That's there. That's right. Well, hey, but well, we also learned about that brush. I, I, oh, I, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. You know what? That one snuck up oh, on me. Man. You almost took my skin off with that. Oh, yeah. That was, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to laugh. <laughs> no, it was my yeah, face. No, 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 no. <laughs>
Yeah, that was great. Once again, Barack Elijah Doshi, the Uki of the day. All right, so um, I'm with my partner in crime, Barack Elijah Doshi. And I'm with my partner in crime here, Israel Lopez Sensei. And you've been watching Modern Combatives.